What's up guys, it is Chris back with another watch video today. I'm doing a little bit of a state of the collection because it is rare that I have all my watches with me at once. Usually they are either in the bank and I only keep a few with me so uh, I figured I would do a state of the collection while I have them all together. Um, this is not all of them either so I have uh, another box that I need to uh, to get out as well. I'm going to go through those and essentially what I'm doing is I'm thinning the herd. I've been uh, uploading some of these watches to eBay, putting them on eBay and uh, selling them so some of these have actually probably already sold. Uh, I don't know if any of them are on this in this box or the other box but uh, I will go through uh, just starting from the top left and this is going to be like a part one and I'll start with the top left uh, and then I'll work my way through and then when I think the video is getting a little too long I will stop the video and then I'll do a part two uh, and I will release that at a later date obviously. So starting right here uh, at the top left we have the Vacheron Overseas World Timer. Certainly one of my favorite watches. This is a watch that I picked up in 2019. I picked it up uh, somewhere after my birthday, which is in August, so, um, and this is on the uh, leather strap right now, the uh, leather alligator strap with a, a nice rubber lining on the inside. Very, very beautiful strap, very beautiful watch, uh, and you could see the movement there, world time movement with a solid 22 karat rose gold rotor. Um, just an amazing, amazing watch. I love this watch and I wear it as often as I can. Um, yeah, very underrated watch as well. I think uh, you can see I have a lot of underrated watches. I really don't have any watches that are that popular, I would say. If I really, you know, if you look at other YouTube channels, I think that maybe the only thing that I have is that is somewhat popular compared to other channels is maybe even this, this Casio uh, World Timer, but then the uh, the AP that I have here uh, is the uh, Royal Oak Offshore um, uh, Diver, and that's pretty popular, I guess. Uh, but everything else is sort of funky, I, I, at least in my opinion. Um, here we have the another World Timer from Vacheron, and this is the Traditionnel. It's the exact same movement, just a very different dial. Obviously, this is in rose gold, so this is solid rose gold. And or solid rose gold uh, deployant. The the rotor is also solid 22 karat rose gold. The dial is solid uh, 22 karat rose gold as well. Hands as well. So they really go to town with the rose gold on this watch. Just a gorgeous watch in my opinion. One of my again one of my favorites. I'm a huge Vacheron fan. I love Vacheron, and you'll see that from my collection because. Um, you know, my first three watches here will be Vacheron's, and, and as you can see, yet another one from Vacheron. Again, a very underrated watch. Recently, this watch was actually discontinued by Vacheron. So was this watch. Uh, the the Overseas was only discontinued in color, so I have the silver dial, which is like a white, silver, black dial. Uh, that's still being made in blue and brown, I believe. Uh, however... Um, this is no longer being made whatsoever. Uh, the World Time is only now uh, with the Vacheron Overseas Collection, and the Traditionnel is no longer being made. The Traditionnel goes on with many other um, iterations of the actual case, uh, but they are no longer putting a, a World Time function on the Traditionnel. So that's kind of sad, but uh, that's that's the way it is. I, and again, I'm I say it's underrated because you know. Pedic Philippe's are trading well above uh, their their asked MR, MSRP, and and these obviously are selling at somewhat of a discount, and you can go out and get these pretty readily. Um, these are actually becoming a little bit harder to get uh, in their counterparts. So the just the the um, the regular time only and the dual times there, the Vacheron overseas are becoming a little bit more scarce, I think. Uh, but definitely you could walk into an AD and put your name down and you'll get one in a couple of weeks or, or, um, or days. So it's not, it's not hard to get these as compared to, you know, um, AP or Patek, which you would be left at. Uh, the key to Lee, 
This is a super cool watch. Very, very different. Uh, not a lot of people uh, review these on, on YouTube. I, I don't see a lot of people ever even talk about this, this watch anymore. Uh, this was an attempt by Vacheron to be a little bit avant-garde, create something that was a little bit out of the box. Uh, I think they made a couple of mistakes on this watch. One, not putting a screw-down crown on it because it does have a sportier uh, vintage, well, more Art Deco, uh, modern Art Deco uh, look to it. And they put, you know, loomed hands on it, uh, a sapphire dial, see-through dial, basically, and there's a whole bunch of etching on the sapphire. Really cool. 22 karat, uh, uh, excuse me, 22 karat gold rotor. However, they blackened the rotor, so it actually looks like tungsten, but it's not. The case is titanium. The buckle is titanium. It comes with two straps, rubber and alligator. I put this back on my rubber strap, and actually, I'm going to throw this on the wrist really quick, but before I do that, I'll do a wristwatch check. I am wearing my Panerai. This is the um, Carbotech with rose gold indices. Really, really beautiful watch. This is the extra thin movement in it. Uh, the 9100 or 9010, I don't remember. And I just recently got this strap, which is a Velcro strap, and I have been loving it. It is so comfortable and very easy to wear. Really makes the watch extremely comfortable to wear. I really highly recommend if you have a Panerai, which is 44 millimeters. And recently I've been getting out of watches that are that large, 44 millimeters and above. And, you know, Panerai definitely wear larger than that. But for some reason with Panerai, I'm okay with the size because that was their original DNA from the very beginning. They didn't upsize anything. And they have actually downsized most of their watches. And I think that they look really good on the wrist, uh, especially since they look like a dive watch. They, they, you know, the, that was their aesthetic. That's their design, you know, cue from the very beginning. And I really like that. Uh, so I'm, I've always been a Panerai fan and I will continue to be, um, of course. So, uh, back to the Vacheron. You can see it's really very faceted. A lot of sharp edges on this watch. They're not sharp physically, but they're, but the lines are very sharp. Uh, screwed in lugs, uh, obviously. And there's a dome sapphire crystal on this, which is very nice. The other two are flat sapphire crystals on my other Vacherons. And, of course, you could see it on the wrist here. And it is just a really cool, very funky, very different watch. That date wheel works um, kind of weird. It's just a date wheel. And then there is a white area that will highlight the date instead of the date actually changing. It's stationary and the wheel moves. Uh, just a lot of thought went into the watch. A lot of different... Um, a, a lot of different materials were used in, in the watches that they made. And then they paired the whole line down and they came out with a stainless steel version. They lowered the price dramatically. Uh, kind of sucks, but that's what they did. Um, next, we're going into Roger Dubuis. So we're going to go directly into the Homage. This is a watch that is really really cool I really love this watch it is a beautiful dress watch comes on a beautiful leather strap this is a quilted leather strap this actually came on my other um, Monagas which is a uh, another Roger Dubuis this is also solid rose gold as you can see and it has a really beautiful faceted dial as you can see in the light there when it changes sub seconds at nine o'clock and I think the you know the the best part about this watch is the movement when you turn it over that micro rotor Geneva seal on the uh, Geneva Hallmark seal on the movement and the case just beautiful finishing on this watch a lot of people hate Roger Dubuis 42 millimeters across I don't know why um, Roger Dubuis actually worked for Patek Philippe he was a watchmaker at Patek Philippe, and he brought a lot of that knowledge to his own brand. He made some incredible watches, in-house movements. They were bought by Richemont, uh, acquired by Richemont, and, I mean, they continue to make really, really cool watches. Very, very out there, not your traditional, you know, Patek uh, and, and Vacheron-looking watches. They kind of went for that 
AP market that want those avant-garde kind of crazy looking watches and they they um they were doing really well and then they fell on their face during the crisis in the early uh 2000s and and um financial crisis in the early 2000s and the brand really didn't recover because of a, a bunch of watches that were being uh I guess dumped onto the market for very low margins but in general the quality is there i mean these are getting geneva seal um, hallmarks on the case and movements and you can see I mean this is an incredible watch and if you've handled them uh, you would know that they are just absolutely beautiful watches and they're selling for just fractions on the on the original uh, MSRP I think this was probably in the neighborhood of a $30,000 watch and, it, and obviously I paid nowhere near that uh, next watch another Roger Dubuis this is the Monagas that is basically what people uh, the people of of uh, Monaco are called. That's their their uh, nickname, I guess, or, or um, something along those lines. I'm not actually that sure. Uh, this is actually a very thin uh, movement uh, watch. You can see here, uh, again, another in-house movement for Roger Dubuis. Just absolutely beautiful movement. Um, uh, really well finished. Again, you have the Geneva seal on the movement and on the case on, on this watch. Uh, again, this is, uh, again, 22 karat rose gold, solid rose gold. You can actually not see this in this light. And in fact, it's very hard to see in any light. There is a black lacquer insert around the, the dial. This was sort of a continuation of a previous line that Roger Dubuis was making, the Sympathy. And, uh, they went into this K shape. I actually like this K shape way better. The dial is supposedly inspired by a roulette wheel, and you could definitely see that, um, you know, with the uh, with the outer ring, uh, chapter ring in sort of like a grayish, blackish blue, uh, and then the concentric circles going into the center. Looks, I mean, looks fantastic. There's no date on this. It's very clean. Uh, no date on the other Roger Dubuis either. Just a beautiful, beautiful watch. I love this watch, and when I put it on my wrist. You know, I'm reminded why this is such a cool watch. It's so good looking. It is just one of the best looking watches that I own, I think. It's it's perfect in almost every single way. It's just gorgeous. I really, really, really love that watch. Um, and it's a keeper that will never, ever leave my collection. Um, cannot say that for all my Roger Dubuis because, um, like I said, I have pared down sizes a little bit. I love my Roger Dubuis in, in gold here, but um, this might be a watch that is going to be on the chopping block soon. It is my um, Black Swan, and the only reason why is, you know, I'm going to show you, on my wrist it is pretty enormous, and it is 47 millimeters, I believe. The actual bezel jets out a little bit more. This is solid ceramic. Uh, however, every time I go to sell it, I stop myself because I love it so much. Uh, this is called the Black Swan. It's limited to 88 pieces. This is uh, ceramic in the back. You can see it's 300 meters uh, water resistant. You have that same in-house movement that you have in the Monagas. Uh, rubber strap, beautiful finished buckle. Everything is beautiful on this watch. A lot of attention to detail. Some carbon fiber inlays on the inside of the lugs. Beautiful finishing on the side. Like I said, ceramic bezel, ceramic case back, metal case back with that RD motif everywhere. Um, just really, really beautiful watch. Screw down crown, black Luminova on here, which really isn't that great if you're diving. Uh, however, it looks really, really cool on that black dial. It has a little bit of um, a texture to the dial as well. Subseconds here at six o'clock. Again, Geneva seal, case and movement. So you know this is a really, really well-made watch. Um, and like I said, every time I go to sell this, I kind of second guess and I don't, but I, I, you know, I don't know. It is quite large um, and I have lost some weight over the past year and it just looks even bigger on my wrist, which is kind of crazy. Uh, two watches here. We have two Vicentera and the Vicentera, this is the blue and this is the anthra so uh the the blue is in blue and the anthra is in black it really it's just the 
uh, dial and the anthra has applied indices where these are actually painted on. Uh, 3D uh, grade 5 titanium globe. I actually love this watch so much I spoke to the owner over many many months and then I became a basically a brand ambassador for them here in the United States. I am uh, on their website and if you want to see one of these watches you definitely can contact me. Uh, I'm going to do a video on these watches just so that you guys can see them um, and, and, and if you are interested you could always contact me but um, I think they're a beautiful watch. I bought this watch with my own money uh, and then I, uh, I ended up you know, kind of working with the brand uh, and I go out and I meet people and I, and I show them these watches and a lot of people uh, end up buying them because they're so beautiful. I do, if you buy one of them, I do get a commission obviously, but um, you know, if you buy through me, uh, but I highly recommend these watches. Uh, I, I think they're just absolutely gorgeous. You get a lot for your money. I believe this watch retails for about forty-two fifty right now um, in U.S. dollars. Like I said, grade five titanium. You have an Eta movement. The module is all in house. Grade five titanium globe. Um, just a just a really beautiful sunburst dial. Uh, it, it's uh, it's got a bowl here where the globe actually sits in. Um, but I won't go too much into this because obviously I don't want to make this into a sales pitch. But definitely check those out. Uh, and then the last watch I'll do because this video is getting very long is my uh, Zelos Mako 3. This is in Meteorite with the Meteorite bezel. Uh, again, uh, another beautiful watch from Zelos. Uh, and you can see uh, 40 millimeters fits me really, really well. I love the blued hands uh, and blued indices. The bezel looks really, really good. I, I really love this watch. I kind of wish I actually got the green version of this watch because I, I like the green a little bit better than this. I feel like this uh, this bezel comes out like a, almost like a, a ghost bezel. I like it. I think that the green would have been a little bit nicer for day to day um, for me. Now, uh, I really hope they come out with a black sand version because I probably would buy the black sand version and that would be a very, very good everyday uh, travel watch. Uh, I really love what, what the brand is doing in general. I think Zelos is really killing it. Again, I, I purchased this from Zelos uh, and, and uh, I, I have not regretted it. I really love it. Uh, however, uh, you know, to make room, I may end up selling something like this. Um, and, uh, I'm thinking about selling, uh, some Omegas, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to continue this video in, uh, in, uh, in another, a uh, part two, I guess, because there are just way too many watches to go through. So, um, yeah, thank you for logging on. Tell me what you think of this collection, uh, so far, and we will, uh, we'll catch up in the next one.